Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, we have finished inheritance and we will return to polymorphism. That is, uh, we are doing this uh, operator over the And uh, we have seen things like mathematical operations, overloading mathematical operations, and overloading some basic string operations as well. Um, so, what we did so far is basically unary and binary operations. So, let's do something, I mean, operator overload only, but it's a bit, um, you know different as in the operator that we want to overload it's not your usual unary or binary operator. so um, we want to this uh, overload the subscript or index operator for example, for example when you want to uh, access the ith element of an array so say some uh, variable is equal to this so basically this is the index or subscript operator okay uh, this one and yeah, this is what we will overload. Now, the difference of this, I mean, of course, how it is written is a difference. And the other difference is that this can be, uh, I mean, you can you, you can take some value and you can put some value using this. So you can say this or you can say something like, you can do both. So uh, we will try to overload. And this works with arrays. So, first step is to make uh, a separate. I mean, so of course, we are overloading means we will not use this on an array, we will use this on an array like structure that we will define. Okay, and uh, let's do it. So, This is our array size. So actually, uh, constants are written as I mean, it's a convention to write them as all capital, but breaking that convention is okay. So, two, two, uh, two functions we'll need. So, one for this uh, assignment, the other one for uh, returning. So, put element is int n element value okay. so it just the I mean since we can expect a wrong output a wrong input So the default uh, value to be returned is like uh, exit zero. The compiler understands that the program is successful. Exit one is that it's not. Uh, you can always uh, so uh, if you're using uh, Windows, which you shouldn't. Uh, this exit needs, I think, some header called process dot h in Linux stdio dot h of nice. Uh, but in general, so. Somehow there was, uh, there's an old convention, it's 
along according to which like there is for each function or class or whatever there is a function actually so uh, there is one entry point and there is one exit point so to facilitate that uh, much of the time instead of exit uh at least i prefer to use some uh, flag variable and according to that the uh, compiler is guided out of the function okay through the, a single exit point anyway so um uh, return sorry this is the assignment one and this uh, you can this is the one which returns the value of the element again we can say same thing Oh wait, I've done something. This is sorry. This is when the program exits. So instead, so as a start, instead of an overloaded subscript or index operator, we just use two functions. So by SA1, and uh, we will use uh, loop. set uh, the values of the elements and uh, it's just like 10 times the index and again now we see out So you have returned an array in a void function. Sorry? You have returned an array in the void function. Oh, sorry, sorry. This should be int. Thank you. Uh, so this is, yeah, this is just an element of the array. And uh, one second, I have also forgotten to put brackets. So this was setting the elements and here we'll see out.
says returns should be there. So we we'll get like all the elements will be in this is into 10. Right, so uh, it's correctly uh, setting the elements and also printing the elements. And now our, so we are essentially doing what the index operator would do. Uh, the next step that we would like to achieve is basically so the index operator is a single operator that uh, is a, like a dual purpose thing. Uh, we would like to have a single function which does both of these things. So let's first save and another. save as something else. Okay. And uh, yeah, here we have two functions. So we want to replace these two by something. So um, we can just say that. So we'll, of course, we'll overload the index operator. We we'll, it will be used directly for an object. But uh, as of now, the, this, I mean, so any, anyway, so the way this can behave as an array is to have an array as its member. So we can just um, use the regular this thing. Yeah. Just we are using the index operator through this access function. Okay. Um, but what happens when we actually use this in the main function? Yes. Just say 
here we will just replace get L by access. Okay, let's see what happens if we do this. This is AQ1. So, uh, yeah. L value required as left operand of assignment. Um, so, what exactly is happening here? It is not being able to provide uh, some, yeah, somewhere it is. Yeah. So I think uh, maybe the passing by value is a problem. What if we, uh, because this is not uh, meant to modify the original uh, array. So we can't assign value to a return value of a function. Right, right, right. So, um, yeah. just one second, and we do this. Right. So, uh, calling the function, I mean, yeah, calling the function by reference uh, solves this problem because now to, in, uh, so yeah, since it is uh, used from the left side of the equal uh, sign, uh, this uh, overloaded function should return uh, by reference. Like, okay, so now this, this works, I mean, does this work? Let's see this. So now we uh, have whatever is required to overload the operator. As of now, this works exactly like the index operator only. So we have to just write it in our standard way of overloading the operators. So um, not much left really. Just can say that uh, the normal way that we were overloading operator keywords is supposed to be there. I guess this should do it. Mm, okay. And uh, here, so, right. Compiler uh, allows us to use uh, the index operator as it is. No, I mean, as it is uh, normally. And so, we can say that here. Let's say one. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. So the, the issue was that uh, you know you, you can't uh, you cannot have uh, like if you don't pass by reference, you cannot have this uh, on the you know, left side of the equality sign. So this works. Uh, other than this, uh, you know, this uh, left side trivia, pretty much everything is working uh, as in the you know, general framework of overload function. Okay. So. was overloading the index function and uh, right another issue that we should address is data conversion so uh, this C++ pretty much has uh, a very good system for converting between the primary data types. The problem arises that, uh, I mean, not a problem, but it's a bit different when we, uh, when we um, seek to convert, like between some uh, derived data types. So one, one, de one derivation, I mean, uh, <coughs> one thing that we do very often is uh, convert from a primary to a derived data type because we keep we keep uh, you know in our distance class we keep uh, converting from int to you know this uh, distance often which is basically feet and inches um, yeah so let's let's write this once again our favorite class here. This is uh, to aid in conversion. Let me just repeat. And uh, int, int, quote, images. Public instance. This is our constructor. This is the integer, the regular 
This is the conversion of inches. And what is the like the residue? Usually get this then show this functions. And here is the conversion operator that we can use. Just, uh, so just let me read the main function first.
So this is meters, right? Okay, yeah. So how much is two meters? One point eight zero or something like that. Okay? And uh, Oh yeah, that's sorry. How, uh, like six feet is uh, one point eight zero, and um, that means seven foot would be two point one five or something like that. So that leaves twenty centimeters. Oh yeah, I'm bad at this. This is a conversion. So yeah, it it it's seven foot something, almost eight feet. Yeah. So this is working, and this is. Working because uh, of this. Uh, no. So, show this. this. Um, what is happening here? Distance. This is done. And uh, so, converts meters to distance. That is happening. Um, Here is the converter, which is uh, right because it uh, yeah this is this is using the uh, one argument constructor right this one this one is using the one argument constructor and uh, the conversion happens automatically. There is this cast operator, uh, like it's written as static cast, from which uh, you know. So we can force the compiler to convert from one type to another. Okay, and uh, we might use the same thing here. So. But but the thing is that um, so static cast. Let me give you an example. Let me check if the static cast operator is necessary. Int var and int var is equal to fl var. It's not. Uh, it's not doing this automatic. I mean, like in some cases, uh, I think not necessarily in C++, but in Python you could do this directly. Um, just uh, let's see if the opposite is 
uh, is uh, possible. Let's check. Uh, one goes to eight. Sorry. Oh, what, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Eight. Now let's let's see. Yes, it's rounding down. And uh, what if we have some We should see some example where this is. It's not this easy always. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, today it's time. So tomorrow we'll first. Uh, yeah. So uh, we are already into this uh, conversion inside classes. We have done it one way, but uh, before doing it the other way, we will actually uh, see uh, the usual. I mean, uh, like all kinds of conversions between the primary data types, whatever is possible. Otherwise, we'll not get the flavor of this. Um, so anyway, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. And tomorrow we'll finish off this awkward. We should also see like, yeah, we should also use characters and strings for this one. Anyway, yeah. So see you tomorrow.